book of Ezekiel. The major prophet for a time of major challenge in the life of Israel. Ezekiel, the 20th chapter. I will begin to read at verse 22. What did I say? I said Ezekiel 12. Ezekiel 12. Just trying to see if y'all was listening. Ezekiel 12. And I'll begin to read at verse 21, Ezekiel 12 and 21. Reading first from the New International Version of Scripture, Ezekiel 12 and 21, if you have it, say amen. amen. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, what is this proverb that you have in the land of Israel? The days go by and every vision comes to nothing. Say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. I'm going to put an end to this proverb and they will no longer quote it in Israel. Say to them, the days are near when every vision will be fulfilled. There will be no more false visions or flattering divinations among the people of Israel. But I, the Lord, will speak what I will, and it shall be fulfilled without delay. For in your days, you rebellious house, I will fulfill whatever I say, declares the Sovereign Lord. The word of the Lord came to me, son of man, the house of Israel is saying, how many of you know God hears you grumbling behind the door? God hears when you get on the parking lot and chatter about what the preacher just preached but the Lord hears. The word of the Lord came to me, son of man, the house of Israel is saying, the vision he sees is for many years from now. And he prophesies about a distant future. Therefore say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. None of my words will be delayed any longer. None of my words will be delayed any longer. Whatever I say will be fulfilled, says the Sovereign Lord. May I read that to you from the Message Bible? God's message came to me, son of man, what's this proverb making the rounds in the land of Israel that says everything goes on the same as ever? All the prophetic warnings are false alarms. Tell them, God the Master says, this proverb is going to have a short life. Tell them time's about up. Every warning's about to come true. False alarms and easygoing preaching are a thing of the past. I, God, am doing the speaking. What I say happens. What I say happens. None of what I say is on hold. What I say I'll do. And soon, you rebels, the decree of the Lord has spoken it. This too is the word of the Lord. Sit down if you want to. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. My strength and my redeemer, in Jesus' name, amen. Nothing ventured, 
nothing gained. We've been in this series of teaching, both on Wednesday and Sunday, and somebody has the nerve to say when they're going to move on to something else. Touch your friend and say, when you get this. I want to talk about faith again. Somebody say faith, faith. again. Amen. Your life is God's gift to you. What you make of your life is your gift back to God. The scriptures, somebody say the word of the Lord, is given for a threefold purpose. The first purpose of the scripture, somebody say the word of the Lord, is given to show the sinner, the lost person, the one who is wandering through life, the way back to God. Somebody say the way to God. Look at here now, look at here. Look, I already preached one time. I'll preach fast if y'all will help me preach. The word of God is first of all given to show the sinner the way back to God. To remind us that God created all things good in his own image, but that man broke the fellowship and wandered away. But thanks be unto God, he did not leave us as a ship without a sail. He gave us the word of the Lord to show us the way back to God. Uh, 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 it, it, is, it is also given uh, to show us that the way to God is three easy steps. The way to God, first of all, defines us and shows us who we are and who we're not. Somebody say the way to God. It defines us. It defines us. It, it lets us know that without God, we are sinners. And with God, we are sinners saved by grace. It defines us, it defines us and lets us know that, that when we come into the world, we come in as creations of God, but we are not children of God until we receive the new birth. For as many as received him, to them he gave the power to become the children of God. It defines us, first of all, and, and, and then the, the word of God, which, which uh, shows us the way back to God, it not only defines us, but it then detours us. Do you remember before you even got saved but you came to church? And there was always a word of God, even though you weren't saved, it told you, hey, stop your foolishness. Even though you had not yet yielded to God, the word of God came to say, hey, let me give you a detour so you don't fall in that ditch. That the word of God, even if you're not ready to obey it, because it's trying to get you back to God, it not only defines where you are, but then in mercy, it gives you a detour because you were just about to step on the landmine and blow your crazy self up. Boom! Showing us the way back to God. Uh, the word of God defines us and then it detours us and gives us in mercy an opportunity to get saved even though we're not. Don't act like you never had a detour. It defines who we are. It detours us. It says, broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many there be that find it, but narrow is the way. It says, come off a broad way. Come on. I'm trying to detour you. The word of God gives us a way back to God in that it defines us and it detours us, and then it gives us a divine destination we used to teach in the old church that we are pilgrims just passing through. This generation does not believe that, but baby, you did not come here to stay. You can get mad and walk off from God when your mama dies or your dad, but listen, we all gonna die because we're just pilgrims passing through this life. Don't, 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 don't think that God saves us and gives us a way back to God so we can have an abundant life right down here. That's a wonderful thing. He said, I wish that you prosper and be in health right now. I, I want you to have prosperity right now. Somebody holler right now. Uh, I, I want you to enjoy all things fully right now. But I want you to know that all that you enjoy right now is only preparing you for later on. 
and the way I manage it and the way I steward it and the way I carry it with a loose hand will determine if I'll make it to the destination that God has in mind for me. The Word of God is given to show me the way back to God in that it defines my present status and that it detours me in mercy before I, 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 I can even get to the blood and then it gives me a divine destination to remind me that all that I have now, now is going to run its course and I got to be prepared for then. shows me the way back to God it reminds me that I got a, a, a hell to miss and a heaven to gain the saints were a little stronger when we believed in an afterlife the saints were a little more dedicated when we believed that we had a destination the saints were a little more consecrated when we understood that that, that life is like a vapor and that it could be cut off any moment the Word of God, first of all, is designed to give us the way to God. Why does life and the devil and circumstance want to keep you out of church? Because you ain't going to hear about this way nowhere else. Why does he try to, try to keep you offended with the church? Because the gospel ain't being preached at the club. It is here that we show you the way back to God. Why does your body say, I don't feel like going today? Uh, because the devil knows there's a way. God's trying to help you to walk in. The Bible, the Word of God, the Sovereign Lord teaches us, first of all, the way to Christ. And then, secondly, the Word of God teaches us not just the way to God, but it teaches us the walk with God after we get born again. It is not enough. For a believer to come to the altar and cry three tears and put your name on the church roll and then think you're ready for heaven. It is not enough, come on here, just to get delivered today. You got to be discipled tomorrow. There's got to be a walk with God. Ain't nobody here but me. I said there's got to be a process, uh, uh, not just of getting saved, but being separated unto God for good works. The way the, the, the Spirit of God in the Word of God teaches us the way to God, and then it teaches us the walk with God. Yes. Am I in here? Yes. We, we got a strong evangelistic pull on this church, and we can get folks saved. Uh, but I want you to know it's not enough for us to get you saved. We got to help you to become sanctified. Yes. And that's where we lose most people, because you want to be saved and carry your junk into the church. You want to be saved and not let the Word of God wash you from past lifestyles. It's quiet in here now. Uh, we, we, want to be, we want to be delivered, but we don't want to be discipled. The Word of God is to teach you that it is not enough just to have a wedding. You got to have a marriage. It is the walk with God uh -huh, uh, that, that is the proof of the pudding whether you ever found out the way of God. The Word of God teaches us that there's a way out of sin. It's a problem when you don't think you're in sin. But the Word of God defines me that without the blood, I'm lost. Without the work of Calvary, I'm going down and not up. It defines me and it lets me know there's a way out. Touch your friend and say, you got to be saved. You don't got to be a member of new creation, but you got to be saved. Uh-huh. You don't got to worship like I worship or praise like I pray, but you got to be saved. Oh, hallelujah. Your, 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 your way out is through the word of the Lord, and then your walk with is the necessary ingredient to let the world know that something different has happened in your life. You got to be saved and you got to be sanctified. And that means the things that I used to do, this is old school gospel, I don't do no more. It teaches me the walk with Christ that lets me know that I do not uh, uh, make allowances for my own emotions, appetites, and behaviors just because I used to do it in the world and God understands. No, no, no. God might understand, but sinners don't understand when they're looking at your life. 
They're looking to see a difference between clean and unclean. I'm taking too long on this, but I need somebody to get it. That there's a way out and that there's a walk with. Uh, uh, but the, the third thing that I, I want to get to, somebody say faith again, faith again, faith again. Somebody holler faith again. We have somehow, we've gotten the way out and we've got the walk with. But the problem that most of us have gotten, forgotten, is that we have forgotten the wow of our life in Christ. We, we, we can walk it and talk it and we, we are robotic in our obedience. But when you got the Holy Ghost... And when you walk by faith, and when you learn how to venture with the Holy Ghost, something about your life say, wow! Nothing ventured, nothing gained. The wonder of Christ is seen when the saints wake up to faith again. Uh, uh, when, 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 when God can ignite a new dream in you and a new vision in you, oh my God, and a new belief in you, something happens in your life where you're not just talking it and walking it, you wow in it. I'm only talking about 17 people, but I decided, you know what? I, I, I can't let you siphon my faith. I can't let you piggyback on my faith. <laughs> because you will drain me of my, wow! I, I can't let you dump your troubles on me and, 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 and you make me do all the praying and you do all the whining. No, you need to get your wow back. And it comes by faith again. Hallelujah. Faith again, faith, faith again. It, the wow of God, when you have listened to the word of God and got it embedded in the way of God in your life, oh my God, something in you begins to change and you begin to declare by faith, wow, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Wow, you can't even open your mouth and get with me, but when you got it in you, by faith again, you can declare, I shall live and not die. Why? I can go to the doctor and the doctor can give me a bad report. I will pay my copay, walk out the door and say, wow, I believe I'm healed. Hallelujah, I believe I'll live and not die. Because by faith again, I begin uh, to repercolate in the things that have gone to sleep in my life. Touch three people and say, wake up you sleeper. You need a wow again. Hallelujah. Greater work shall I do because he's gone to the Father. Wow! Hallelujah. I might have to go by myself and you don't want to go with me. That's all right. Wow! I believe I'll run on and see what the end's gonna be because I'm faith in it again. Glory to God forevermore. I have everything I need to get everything I want. Wow! The words of the Clark sisters, when, when I begin to faith it again, I start to see it before I can see it. Oh, I never will see it. What are you doing, girl? I'm faithing it again. Faith, faith is not just a noun, a person, place, a thing. But faith is a verb. I'm faithing it. No, no, nobody don't get where I am. That's all right. I'm faith in it. You worry in it, but I'm faith in it. You chatting about it on Facebook, but I'm faith in it. Because by faith, the boundary lines of my life begin to widen. Wow! When I, when, I, when I begin to faith it uh, again, uh, the narrow confines of what I see uh, begin to melt away. 
And when, when I faith it again, people start to think I'm crazy because when I should be crying, I'm talking about, wow! I see what God is up to. You better get your wow back. Some of y'all ain't never had no wow. That's the problem. Maybe that's the problem. It, it, it comes with not just being saved and not just being sanctified, but the problem in our church, some of y'all ain't yet got the Holy Ghost. When you get the Holy Ghost, I'm talking about the fire burning. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm talking about uh, uh, the real wheel turning. Uh, the Holy Ghost that, that changes your gossiping tongue to other languages. It gives you a kind of wow so that when you should be cussing, you blessing people. So that when you should be holding on to your money scared, you're sowing seed everywhere. Wow! The Holy Ghost begins to water your faith and helps you to start to move in dimensions that you ain't never moved in before. Oh, bless your name forevermore. It teaches me the walk. It teaches me the way out. But the Holy Ghost by faith teaches me the wow again. I promise you, I told God and a few other people, I'm cutting off the suckers. You better get your own wow. You better get your own walk. You, you better get to, you, you, your own way out. Because I'm 60 something years old now. I have kept the faith. I've been faithful on my journey. I'm gonna see God in a little while. And I don't wanna see him with suckers hanging on me and pulling me down and making me see God all contaminated and mad and missing my reward. No, I got to keep my wow. Hallelujah. I got to, I got to go, I got to go. One of the problems that we have in the household of faith so that we, we don't faith it again. Ezekiel talking to the people, he said there's a proverb going around. And it may not be spoken with your mouth, but it goes around in your mind and in your spirit. You may never say it out loud in the assembly of the upright, but there's a parable in your mind that says, well, God has taken too long. There, there, because of the accumulation of delayed responses, there's something in your mind that begins to say, well, we done heard that before. And the prophecies and the, the words of God, uh, they probably are not going to come to pass. Ah, you got to be careful because God is listening to your unbelief. I said God is listening uh, to, the, to the recesses of your mind. And you'll tell people with your mouth, I'm operating in faith. But in your heart, you're operating in cynicism. You'll tell people uh, in the face of the bishop, I'm operating by faith. But in your spirit, you don't believe nothing no more. Oh, but I came to tell you, it's the, 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 the word of the Lord said, I'm finna step in to the circumstances of those who are willing to faith it again. Some of us have allowed our faith to go to sleep. Some of us have allowed our faith to get on deep freeze. I'm talking to you, let me rattle your chain this morning. Some of you have been in church so long that you don't believe nothing no more. Oh my God, some of you have not learned from the journey God was trying to take you through to make you strong and you came through cynical and unbelieving. Oh, but let me tell you what, I'd rather die believing God. I'd rather die believing God than to live believing that he won't keep his word. God said, I'm getting ready to bust the move here. I'm getting ready to annihilate this proverb that's been circulating among my people. You say that the, that, that the move of God is taking too long. You say that God really does not mean what God says. You say uh, that, that uh, God uh, was, was having respect to persons and he blessed them, but he's not going to bless me. He said, I'm getting ready to annihilate that proverb. But it will only be for those who are willing to faith it again. 
You wonder why it's not happening for you? Because sometimes the length of having to faith it has made you weary. I'm talking to myself now. Some things I asked God for a whole lot of years and I got silence from heaven. Whole lot of the things I thought God was going to do for me and he didn't do it. And when the enemy begins to talk in your ear, sometimes you say, hold on, that sounds right. But because my sheep know my voice, because my sheep know my way, and they've been walking with me long enough to know the liar from the truth. Uh, every now and then I have to tell him, talk to the hand. The devil is a liar. Everything he ever said was a lie. He comes to steal and kill and destroy. I'm going to pick my faith back up again and walk it out. What do you need? You don't need another preacher. You don't need another church. You need faith again. Y'all trying to hurt me, go eat some ribs, I know. You better eat some of this meat. Cause nothing ventured. And you can't venture unless you got some faith. Nothing gained. Bless your name forevermore. Faith, 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 faith again. Faith again. But I still belong to the church. Yeah, but you ain't got no faith. Faith again. I said faith is a verb. Come on. Faith again. Just like you walk again. Like you give again. Like you praise again. Tell somebody faith again. Three quick things. If you're faith again, if you're faith again, if you're faith again, the first thing, that when I start to faith again, I start to see again. 